In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here from the maths paper 1 3 from 2024 Cambridge A level exams. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, have a look in the description below. There should be a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a search on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to doing in the classroom. But remember, we're not in the classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage of that. Pause, rewind, even watch it at a different speed. If you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, a share, or even a super thanks. In question two, we're given this trigonometric equation here, and they've drawn a picture of it up here. And they, they basically ask us to find the points A and B. Now this question is interesting in that a lot of students can just do this in their head, which is fine, but if you're good enough to do this in your head, you're probably not watching this video. Um, another way to do it is probably a awkward, I haven't even tried, I'm sure it probably does work out. Um, by putting this equation equal to zero, you should find all of these points and figure out which one is A, that's one way to do it. Um, then you can find this point by, uh, I guess, differentiating it, and you'd find all of these uh, maximums and minimums, and again, you could figure out which one it is by uh, roughly guessing along. Um, how I'm going to do it, though, is I'm going to draw a few pictures, and it will hopefully help you then do it in your head, as it were. We're not going to do it in our head, because we'll have some pictures to work off, but it will give you the idea of that, and uh, I think that idea is uh, the best way to do this question and um, it's how the examiner probably wants you to do it with or without the pictures okay so what do i mean by pictures uh, this is a picture of this equation i'm going to draw a few other equations to help us uh, along a bit i'm going to draw a cosine of just an angle uh, think of this as a bracket something in this bracket and we'll uh, we'll draw that like this um, that will look like it starts up here, comes down. I'm not going to be too exact. That'll be a fairly rough here. And um, this hits at this starts at zero. It's uh, it's first full rotations at two pi. Halfway through that is at pi. It, it looks pretty much like that. Now, what would happen if we then did cosine theta minus pi over six? Now, some students if. You might remember taking away a sign, uh, taking away an angle inside here moves everything to the right. So if you remember that, that's brilliant. Work with that. Um, if you don't remember it, I'm going to try and explain a little why that is now. Um, this, this point here, this, uh, when I put zero in, I get this number. I get one, in fact. Um, if I put zero into this bracket, I should still get one. If I put in um, pi, I should get minus one. If I put two pi in, I should get zero again. What changes is, is the theta. So how, here's how I think of it. How do I put zero in here? Uh, theta would have to be pi over six, uh, opposite this guy. And that's where we get plus, plus pi over six, and plus means moving to the right. That's at least how I think of why we move to the right when we put a minus in. Um, so what I mean is at pi over six, at pi over six would just be maybe somewhere like here. It's pi over two, just just barely moved out a little. In fact, it's this length on this one. Uh, pi over six, at pi over six, zero goes in, and I get exactly one out here. The top of, uh, remember this says going on like that, the top of this, uh, this bump here. And the bottom of the bump, instead of being at pi, it'd be at pi, plus pi over six. Uh, so let's uh, let's just draw that here. So this bottom of the bump wouldn't be at, um, this is at pi over six. It uh, wouldn't be at pi anymore. Pi would be just over here, and uh, this would be a new number, which we'll put in in a moment. At uh, the top of this bump isn't at two pi anymore. It's just a little to the right of it. Everything is just a little to the right of it. This guy is two pi, and this would be two pi plus pi over six. Okay, but we're still the maximum height of one and of minus one. And lastly is a K. Um, well here, let's try and keep it in line so we can see. All, all the K does, all multiplying by something does, a K cosine pi over, uh, theta minus pi over six, 
all multiplying something does in this is make it go up or down. So if you think about it, multiplying one by k, or let's say, let's just imagine two for a moment. Multiplying one by two, it goes up two. Multiplying zero by two, doesn't go anywhere. Multiplying minus one by two, goes down minus one. Everything gets stretched around the center point. So this will just go up a little higher, um, and I'll go down a little lower, and it will look like that. And this new height here, instead of being one, is k. Instead of being minus one, is minus k. And that's this drawing over here. So I can fill everything in. This is k, this is minus k. Um, this point here is pi over six. Um, this point here is pi, uh, well, let's go back to this one. So they're talking about a here. What's this number here? It's halfway between pi and two pi. That's a three over, let's put an arrow in here, three over two pi, one and a half pi's. So that's here now, that's a three over two pi. What's a? It's been moved, it's been moved by this much. So the, the value for a, uh, the x value, uh, let's see, uh, x of a is equal to three over two pi plus pi over six, just moved slightly. Uh, if you're not good at uh, doing fractions, <laughs> lots of students aren't at your level. Uh, you were probably good years ago. At least this is, I'm speaking of myself as a teacher. I used to be great at fra fractions, but I just use calculators now. But uh, let's, let's do it properly. Multiply the bottom by three, we get a six. And we better multiply the top by three, we'd get a nine. Adding these together, we'd get a 10 over six pi. They cancel though down to uh, five over three. Pi. So the, the coordinates of a is five over three pi, and what's the y coordinate? Well, we can see that it's zero. So that's the answer for a. How would you do that in your head? Um, you would probably have to draw this out, uh, unless you're just really good at remembering the cosine. You'd have to draw the cosine out and think, right, where is this point? And this point's halfway between, so you, that's where you get three over two pi. I'd be thinking, okay, this point should be three over two pi, but it's all being moved by pi over six. And if you were able to do that in your head, you'd get this, or you'd do it on a calculator, or you'd write a sum like that. Anyway, that's how you'd get that. And uh, same way to get B, um, you're looking at this point, you think, right, what should that have been? Well, it should have been here, and that should be three pi. But everything's been moved slightly by pi over six. So uh, doing that up here, that's three pi plus pi over six, uh, change this into uh, base six is 18 over six. So that's equal to 19 pi over six. So B, uh, let's put it up here. B is, um, and the X part is 19 over six pi. And on the Y part, this is, a, I don't fully agree with the question on this. And um, on the Y part, it's minus K. That's fine, except they never warned you that the answer was gonna have a K in it. Usually they tell you the answer will be in the form of K, um, but they made it seem like you should have an exact number here. Um, but no, that's the full marks. You can't, they didn't give you enough information to find any numbers here. Uh, whatever number K is, tells you the tops and bottoms of this. Anyway, that's it for uh, the first part. Let me clear the board and we'll do the next part. All right, in part B, uh, we're something completely different. They've given us a different trigonometric, trigonometric equation and simply asked us to solve it. There's only one unknown. It looks horrible, but there's only one unknown in this, t. And yeah, there's just the one t even as well. So we just solve this by rearranging it and getting t equals. That's, that's all we have to do here. Uh, let's start by uh, isolating this term. Three, uh, the inverse sine of three t must equal pi, would move this whole term over and become a minus, minus two cosine, the inverse cosine, sorry, square root of two over two. You can put this in a calculator now and just get the number out. Uh, if you didn't want to use a calculator, you could even uh, figure it out yourself. Uh, cosine, uh, say of this angle, is the adjacent, that's square root of two, over the hypotenuse, that must be two. So what's this? This must be square root of two and two equal angles, that must be 45 degrees, or are we in radians? Uh, let's assume we're in radians. Uh, pi over four will be this angle. Either way, you could calculate and give you the exact answer for this. Uh, let's do that now, in fact. 
Uh, let's divide everyone by 3 while we're doing it. The inverse sine of 3t is equal to pi minus, so uh, this is 2, and what did I say this is? Uh, pi over 4. Pi over 4, and all that's over this 3 I just divided across. Clean this up while we're working. Uh, take the sine of both sides, we're left with 3t is equal to the sine of, uh, let's see, this is uh, 2 goes into this, 2 times. So we have pi minus a half of pi. So we're left with a half of pi on top. And on the bottom we're 3. Uh, that, that's pi over 6 then we have. So let me write that. 3t is equal to sine uh, pi over 6. And uh, pi over 6 again can be done in our head. Uh, it's a famous one, I mean, sorry. Pi over 6 is like 30 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees is a half. Again, you could do a triangle and work that out yourself with um, Pythagoras theorem, but for now we'll use a calculator and we'll say this is equal to a half divided by this tree, divided by tree, which is um, equal to one over six. And, uh, and that's it for question two. If you have any uh, questions, especially for part A, I would imagine, uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.